The Life of Buggy from One Piece. Buggy's tale is a hilarious one indeed, which is fitting considering that he's a clown. He's sailed with some of the most powerful and illustrious pirates alive, while accidentally falling into greater and greater positions of power, mostly against his will. Once an apprentice of the Roger Pirates alongside Shanks, he was one of the earliest enemies of Monkey D. Luffy and the Straw Hat Pirates, whose actions eventually entangled him in the Summit War on Marineford. Inadvertently, the war grew his reputation enough to become one of the seven warlords of the sea, whereupon he founded the pirate mercenary organization Buggy's Delivery. After the warlord system was abolished, he recreated it as the Cross Guild in partnership with fellow ex-warlords Dracul Mihawk and Crocodile. He's currently recognized as the guild's public leader, and on its power, one of the four emperors. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you are subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. The Apprentice Years at least 30 years ago, Buggy, at the age of 9, joined the Roger Pirates as an apprentice alongside Shanks. One day, the Roger Pirates were reading a newspaper article about a samurai from Wano country that joined the Whitebeard Pirates, and Buggy complained that Whitebeard's crew was receiving all the focus in the news. He and Shanks frequently argued over whether the North Pole or the South Pole was colder and were reprimanded for their endless squabbling by Silver's Rayleigh. At least 27 years ago, the Roger Pirates raided another ship out at sea, and during the battle, Buggy found a map leading to treasure at the bottom of the sea. He kept the map for himself and talked with Shanks after the raid. Shanks revealed that the crew had obtained a devil fruit in the raid, and Buggy became very interested upon hearing that it was worth 100 million in the market. Thus, Buggy volunteered to eat the fruit before creating a fake devil fruit and eating it in front of the crew. With the real devil fruit, the Bara Bara Nomi, still in his possession along with the treasure map, Buggy plotted to leave the Roger Pirates, become rich, and form his own powerful pirate crew. However, Shanks then suddenly greeted him at his hiding spot, forcing Buggy to hide the fruit in his mouth. Shanks left, but then unexpectedly returned to tell Buggy something else, causing Buggy to panic and swallow the fruit whole. As Buggy became enraged at Shanks, he saw that his treasure map had blown into the ocean and he dove in to save it. However, eating the devil fruit rendered him unable to swim, so Shanks was forced to rescue him. In addition to losing his treasure map forever, Buggy now had no way to go underwater to find the treasure, and so he formed a grudge against Shanks. Sometime after that, in the New World, Shiki and the Golden Lion Pirates wanted to team up with the Roger Pirates to take over the world, and due to their massive fleet, Buggy advised Goldie Roger to comply with Shiki's request. However, Roger refused, and the Roger Pirates battled the Golden Lion Pirates in the Battle of Ed War, which was ultimately declared a draw. One year later, on an island in Paradise, the Roger Pirates had easily defeated a battalion of Marines when Buggy spotted the Whitebeard Pirates disembarking on the other side of the island. The Roger Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates battled each other for four days until their conflict settled into a gift exchange. During the ceasefire periods at night, Buggy noticed that Marshal D. Teach of the Whitebeard Pirates never slept, and pointed this out to Shanks after the battle, saying he heard that Teach had never slept in his life. Roger pleaded for Whitebeard to allow the samurai Kozuki Odin to join his crew, and Whitebeard reluctantly agreed. The Roger Pirates were initially hesitant to accept Odin as a crew member, but they quickly warmed up to him. After departing from the island, the Roger Pirates rode a knock-up stream up to Skypea. They managed to find the Shandorian Golden Belfry Bell, and Buggy wanted to take it, but Roger said he would have to do it when he was a captain. Over the next year, the Roger Pirates sailed to destinations including Water 7, Tequila Wolf, Fishman Island, Wano Country, and Zo as they charted a way to reach the legendary final island in the Grand Line. However, right before they sailed to that island, Buggy came down with a fever, forcing him and Shanks to stay behind at the harbor. After the rest of the crew returned from the final island, Roger became known as the Pirate King, and the crew had to fend off many attackers. One day, Roger announced that he was disbanding the crew, and they partied into the night before tearfully bidding farewell the next day. The crew then took Odin back to his home in Wano and bid farewell to him as well. The remainder of the crew then went their separate ways. The New Era one year after the Roger Pirates dissolution, Roger was executed by the world government in Logetown. Buggy and Shanks were present at his execution and they both wept. Afterwards, Shanks asked Buggy to join his crew, but Buggy refused and began operating on his own. With the Great Age of Pirates beginning, in order to escape the eye of the world government, he concealed the fact that he was part of the Roger Pirates. Forming the Buggy Pirates, he began to plunder and pillage the weakest points of the East Blue. Two years ago, not long before the start of the series, he and his crew raided Orange Town and forced the citizens to evacuate into a shelter outside the town to stay safe. Orange Town Arc 
Buggy heard that a thief had stolen his treasure map to the Grand Line and ordered his crew to catch them. When one of his men tried to explain how it got stolen, Buggy misheard him and thought he mentioned his nose, causing him to become enraged and choke his subordinate before ordering him to be blown up with a buggy ball. He then told his crew to catch the thief and loot all of the town's treasure. Later, the thief Nami then arrived on the roof of the tavern and gave Monkey D. Luffy, whom she claimed was her boss, to Buggy as a prisoner. She also gave the treasure map back, saying she and Luffy had a falling out and she wanted to join the Buggy Pirates. The Buggy Pirates started partying to celebrate the recovery of the map, and Buggy put Luffy in a cage and decided to have Nami execute him by shooting a buggy ball at him. When Nami hesitated, one of the buggy pirates decided to light the cannon fuse for her, causing Nami to strike him with her staff as she refused to act like a pirate. Buggy ordered his men to attack her, but they were stopped by Roronora Zoro. Zoro cut Buggy into pieces, and Buggy pretended to be dead, which allowed him to stab Zoro in the back with a disembodied hand. Luffy then insulted Buggy, and Buggy tried attacking him with a knife, but Luffy caught the knife in his mouth and broke it. Zoro got up and went to the cannon, parrying Buggy's knife attacks before flipping the cannon and shooting the buggy ball at Buggy and his crew. The buggy pirates ran away from the ensuing explosion, and after emerging from the smoke, they saw that Luffy, Zoro, and Nami were gone and had taken the key to Luffy's cage. Buggy proclaimed that it would be an embarrassment to be beaten by three thieves, so he had the beast tamer Moji go on his lion Richie to defeat Zoro. Later, Buggy heard that Moji had been defeated and so decided to destroy the entire town with buggy balls. Moji then returned and revealed he had been defeated by Luffy rather than Zoro. After Buggy blew up one row of houses, he was confronted by Orange Town's mayor, Boodle. Buggy easily overpowered Boodle by choking him with a detached hand, but Luffy came and removed his hand from the mayor's neck. Luffy insulted Buggy again, causing the clown to become enraged and immediately fire a buggy ball at him. Luffy then ballooned his body with the power of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, causing the buggy ball to bounce off him and destroy the tavern. Buggy and Kabaji used their crewmates to shield themselves from the blast and emerged unharmed from the tavern wreckage. Zoro then dueled with Kabaji, and when Kabaji moved to attack Zoro from above, Buggy detached his hand to try and restrain Zoro. However, Luffy stomped the hand into the ground, allowing Zoro to dodge the attack and defeat Kabaji. After winning, Zoro revealed that he and Luffy were actually pirates, which surprised Buggy. Luffy proclaimed that he would become the Pirate King, and Buggy mocked him due to his perceived difference in their abilities. Buggy noted that Luffy's straw hat looked similar to Shanks's, and Luffy responded that it was indeed Shanks's hat. Buggy assaulted Luffy with fast blade attacks using his detached hands and legs, and targeted the hat, eventually plunging his knives into it. Buggy revealed that he knew Shanks, and Luffy, enraged that the pirate had damaged the hat and tried to invoke Shanks's name, began to pummel and overwhelm him. Buggy told Luffy about his grudge on Shanks and how it made him determined to seize all the treasure on land that he could. Having noticed Nami sneaking towards his shed to steal his treasure again, Buggy detached his torso and flew to attack her. However, Buggy's torso fell to the ground after Luffy kicked his groin, causing him to split his body parts into small pieces and fly them around at rapid speed. Buggy then tried attacking Nami again, but was stopped once more, this time by Luffy tickling his feet. Nami attempted to hit Buggy with a bag of his treasure, but he intercepted it before sending one of his detached hands to try to stab her from behind. However, Luffy then charged in and kicked Buggy in the face. As Luffy obtained his map to the Grand Line, Buggy elevated his head into the air and attempted to reform his body to resume fighting, but only his hands and lower legs returned to him as Nami had tied up all his other parts. Luffy then stretched both of his arms back and hit Buggy with his outstretched palms, sending him flying off of the island. Buggy's Crew Adventure Chronicles Buggy was next seen rowing through the ocean on a small raft and struggling to avoid the carnivorous fish attacking him. After reaching an island, he attempted to catch and eat a small bird, only to encounter its much larger parent. Buggy attempted to lure the large bird into a trap, but it saw through the trap and attempted to eat him. However, it spat Buggy out because he tasted bad, and Buggy flew all the way to the island of rare animals. There, he was attacked by Gaimon, but the two of them eventually bonded over their unusual bodies. Buggy set back out to sea the next morning and was attacked by a large crab that destroyed his raft. However, the pirate Alvita then arrived and brought Buggy on her ship as she shot the crab. Buggy was shocked to see that Alvita was pursuing Luffy, and the two of them formed a pirate alliance to get revenge on him. The next day, Buggy spotted his ship the Big Top docked at an island, but was aghast upon disembarking to find Moji and Kabaji lying on the ground defeated. Buggy, Alvita, Moji, and Kabaji then went to confront the cannibalistic Kumate tribe, who were cooking the rest of their crew to eat and were examining Buggy's captured body parts. Buggy brought his parts back to him and fully reformed his body, and he, Alvita, Moji, and Kabaji defeated the Kumate tribe as his crew welcomed him back. Logetown Arc The Buggy Pirates and Alvita tracked Luffy and the Straw Hat Pirates to Logetown, and as Alvita reintroduced herself to Luffy while he was on Goldie Rogers' execution platform, Buggy and his crew made their entrance by blowing up a fountain. 
Buggy sentenced Luffy to a flashy execution, and he had Kabaji pin Luffy to the execution platform. Buggy swung his sword at Luffy's neck, but in a stroke of miraculous fortune, a bolt of lightning struck the platform which incapacitated Buggy and allowed Luffy to escape. Buggy quickly recovered from the lightning strike and ordered his crew to go after the Straw Hats, assuming that Moji had burned down their ship. He and Albita raced towards the coast, but were suddenly grabbed by plumes of smoke as Marine Captain Smoker apprehended them. The Marines successfully rounded up and captured the Buggy Pirates and wrapped sea stone nets around Buggy and Alveda to prevent them from using their Devil Fruit abilities. However, a massive gust of wind suddenly blew through the street and freed the Buggy Pirates, allowing them to escape. The crew regrouped under a porch as a storm started, but Buggy decided that they would head into the Grand Line immediately. Jaya Ark The Buggy Pirates went to an island in the Grand Line and searched for treasure in a cave. However, they had gone to the wrong island as miners proceeded to enter the cave and put the pirates to work. Later, Buggy and his crew became excited to hear that Luffy's bounty was now 100 million, believing that it would make him even more infamous once they got their revenge on him. As the Buggy Pirates started partying, Portgas D, ace of the Whitebeard Pirates, came aboard and said he would give them information about Luffy. Buggy was hostile towards Ace until he learned who he was, and Ace suddenly fell asleep. Buggy's subordinates asked if they should kill Ace and become famous, but Buggy ordered them not to do that as he knew that they would anger Whitebeard by attacking a member of his crew. Ace then woke up and took part in the party as he drank with Buggy. Amazon Lily Arc According to an article in a newspaper read by Gloriosa, Buggy was captured by the Marines after accidentally wandering into a Marine garrison, which he thought was a cave containing Captain John's treasure. After being captured, he was imprisoned in level 1 of Impel Down. Impel Down Arc Buggy attempted to sneak out of the prison, but was caught and chased by the Blue Gory. He ended up running alongside Luffy, who revealed he had snuck into the prison. After some initial shock and hostility, the two of them ended up teaming up to fight the Blue Gory. To Buggy's great surprise, Luffy was able to quickly defeat each of them with just one punch. Luffy then revealed he was going down to level 5 to save Ace, and Buggy initially refused to go along with him. However, he then noticed Luffy was wearing an armband that pointed to the exact location of Captain John's treasure, and so he offered to take him down to level 4 in exchange for the armband. To his complete shock, Luffy gave him the armband right then, even after finding out it was a treasure map. Buggy and Luffy ended up crashing through the guard room and into level 1's Crimson Hell and Buggy detached his feet from his body, allowing him to carry Luffy through the air on his back while his feet traversed unharmed through the spike-covered terrain. The duo reached a pit leading to level 2, and Luffy immediately jumped in. Buggy considered taking the armband and making his escape, but he was then beheaded by a Blagori, causing the rest of his body to fall down to level 2. Buggy and Luffy were immediately confronted by the Basilisk from level 2's Wild Beast Hell, and Buggy was left in shock at Luffy's vastly increased power as Luffy used Gear 3 to defeat it. The prisoners asked the pirates to free them, and Buggy decided to let them out to create chaos that would shield him. However, the prisoners ultimately decided to stay imprisoned as long as the boss of level 2 is still around, and Buggy had to admit to Luffy that he was lying about being able to reach level 4. However, Galdino then arrived and said that he could guide them through that level. Buggy, Luffy, and Galdino were then chased by the other wild beasts. Galdino took them to the stairs leading down to level 3 where they encountered the boss of the level, the Sphinx. When the Sphinx started attacking, Buggy and Galdino made a pact to work together to escape and use Luffy as bait. Galdino created wax clones of himself to distract the Sphinx, but as he and Buggy attempted to go back up to level 1, the Sphinx's repeated attacks caused the floor to fall out from under them and sent them falling to level 3. After landing in the very hot starvation hell, the trio and the unconscious Sphinx ended up being caught in a net made of sea stone. However, the Sphinx then woke up and tore the net apart, and Buggy and Galdino climbed up to the rafters, bidding farewell to Luffy as he continued looking for a way down. Buggy and Galdino then heard singing and found Bentham, a former associate of Galdino, in one of the cells. They released Bentham, who went on to join Luffy. Buggy and Galdino then encountered the Jailer Beast Minotaurus, who chased them to Luffy and Bentham's location near a pit going down to level 4. Buggy introduced his new weapon, the Muggy Ball, to the other three and launched it at the Minotaurus from his shoe. The Muggy Ball's explosion injured Minotaurus and successive attacks from Bentham, Luffy, and Galdino defeated it. However, the attacks resulted in the floor collapsing beneath them, sending them down to level 4, the Blazing Hell. As they walked in the intense heat, Bentham recalled that the kitchen was on this level. Buggy wanted to follow Luffy into the kitchen, but Galdino held him back and forced him to hide. He pointed out that the level was heavily guarded and that Impel Down would likely send their top forces, including the Warden Magellan, after them. When Magellan confronted Luffy, Buggy and Galdino decided to take advantage of this and ambush the forces guarding the way back up, believing they had a chance of overpowering the Vice Warden Hannibal. 
but Hannibal actually allowed them to go through the gate, but they attacked him anyways, causing him to easily defeat them. They were then sent to an interrogation room, where they were later freed by Bentham, who was disguised as Hannibal. With Luffy having been poisoned by Magellan and sent to level 5, Bentham wished to go and save him, much to Buggy and Galdino's dismay. As Hannibal, Bentham led the duo into the freezing hell of level 5. However, upon being confronted by ferocious wolves, Buggy and Galdino ran away and left Bentham to help Luffy alone. Buggy and Galdino managed to avoid the guards by hiding behind walls created by Galdino's wax, and over the next 20 hours, they managed to sneak all the way back up to level 2. Buggy quickly took leadership of the prisoners, and they happily followed him as their savior. When Buggy's group reached level 1, they were confronted by all four Jailer Beasts, but the beasts were suddenly taken down by Luffy, Bentham, and their allies from the lowest levels. As Luffy and Galdino battled Magellan, Buggy led the prisoners to the outside of the prison, only to find that there were no ships docked at the shore. Jinbei of the Seven Warlords of the Sea responded by ripping off one of the doors and taking Buggy, Crocodile, and Daz Bones across the water to the marine battleships in the distance. Jinbei used Fishman Jujutsu to propel the trio into one of the ships, and Buggy was left incapacitated by the landing, while Crocodile, Daz Bones, and Jinbei defeated the marines on board. The prisoners celebrated as they all boarded the hijacked battleship and set sail, but they quickly found themselves under attack by the rest of the marine fleet and were heading toward a dead end as the gates of justice were closed. However, the gates were then opened by Bentham, who had stayed behind, and the prisoners all tearfully thanked him when Luffy called him. Thanks to his actions, they were able to pass through the gates and successfully escape from Impel Down. While the other escapees mourned Bentham's presumed sacrifice, Buggy did not think much of it, causing Luffy to punch him. Buggy and the prisoners were shocked to find out that Luffy and his allies intended to go to Marineford to save Ace. The escapees were then contacted by Marine Headquarters, who stated that they had identified both Luffy and Buggy as the masterminds behind the mass breakout, after having discovered that Buggy was once a member of the Roger Pirates. This caused the escapees to admire Buggy even more, and he decided to use this revelation to build up his reputation to the point of dreaming of becoming Pirate King. Marineford Arc Although Marine Headquarters said that they would not open the Gates of Justice to Marineford, the gates unexpectedly opened when the escapees got there. Buggy acted like he was responsible to earn the escapees' admiration, though he had no idea what actually happened. As the escapees neared Marineford, they were suddenly carried up by a massive tsunami created by Whitebeard, only to become stuck high in the air when Admiral Alkaji froze it. They then saw that they were right above Marineford, and Luffy got the idea to slide the ship down the slope of Frozen Wave. However, as they rushed to dislodge the ship, the ice beneath them gave out and they fell into the frozen Marineford Bay below. The escapees miraculously landed in a small, unfrozen spot, and Jinbei pulled Buggy out of the water. Buggy immediately became afraid when Luffy and Ivankov began battling Admiral Kizaru and said he wanted to go home. However, the escapees misheard him and said he wanted to kill Kizaru and so they admired him. The escapees grew restless, wanting Buggy to lead them into battle against Whitebeard before Luffy took all the glory. Whitebeard then called out to Buggy, claiming that the Marines were giving even his crew trouble, and offering to form an alliance to defeat them before Buggy went after his head. Buggy quickly agreed, as Whitebeard's words had easily stoked his pride. When Luffy led the Whitebeard pirates toward Ace's execution platform, Buggy led the escapees into battle to bring glory to his name. Crocodile created a sandstorm while fighting Don Quixote do Flamingo, and Buggy was inadvertently caught in it. While flying around, he was pulled down by Luffy to intercept Dracul Mihawk's sword strikes with his body. Buggy got angry at Mihawk for slicing him up and threw a muggy ball at him, only for Mihawk to deflect it back at Buggy and cause it to detonate on him. Buggy quickly recovered from the explosion with only minor injuries and had his followers film him with a video Den Den Mushi stolen from Impel Down. He used this to introduce and proclaim himself to the audience watching the war broadcast on the Sabadi Archipelago. However, Aokiji quickly stopped the broadcast by encasing Buggy and his men in ice. They were unfrozen not long afterwards when Admiral Akainu attacked the bay with magma fists and Buggy swore revenge on the marines, to his followers' delight. The video Den Den Mushi later regained consciousness, allowing Buggy to start broadcasting himself and his plot to take down Whitebeard to Sabadi again. However, Buggy then watched his ace was killed by Akainu, and Whitebeard met his end at the hands of the Blackbeard pirates. He got scared of the events that transpired and ran away, though his followers mistook his fear for a respectful mourning of Whitebeard as a true rival. As Buggy was flying away, a severely injured Luffy and Jinbei then flew into his arms after being propelled up by one of Crocodile's sandstorms, forcing Buggy to avoid Akainu's relentless attacks. Buggy panicked about what to do with Luffy and Jinbei, when suddenly the pirate Trafalgar Law arrived on his submarine and told Buggy to bring them to him. After Buggy did this, Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates arrived to end the war. Shanks threw Luffy's straw hat at Buggy, offering him a treasure map if he returned it to Luffy. Buggy happily complied, only to find out afterward that Shanks was lying. 
Buggy became very angry at his former crewmate as a result and his followers were awed by him confronting one of the four emperors. However, Buggy quickly calmed down so he could safely leave Marineford with the other pirates. Buggy managed to find and reunite with his crew on an unnamed island, and his crewmates introduced themselves to Galdino and his many other powerful subordinates from Impel Down. Buggy showed Captain John's treasure mark to Alvida, and immediately afterwards he received an invitation from the world government to become a warlord of the sea. During the time skip, Buggy accepted the invitation to join the Seven Warlords and used his newfound freedom to found a mercenary dispatch service called Buggy's Delivery. 3D2Y when Luffy and Boa Hancock had just begun fighting against Sebastian, the Buggy Pirates arrived in the area by coincidence and saw the fight ensuing. Buggy then walks up to his crew and asks who they're fighting, to which he's then informed by Mr. Three that it was the World Pirates and that they were the reason that the Seven Warlords were summoned. Buggy is then surprised by the coincidence and the fact that Luffy was fighting the World Pirates. However, after prompted by his crew to fight World, Buggy decided to let Luffy take down World and then take credit for it. He then tells the crew to alert the world that the Buggy Pirates were fighting with the World Pirates, and the intention of letting the Marines know that a fight was occurring as to attract the Admirals over there and let the Marines take over the fight in case anything went wrong. When it appeared that Sebastian had gained the upper hand, Buggy worried that Luffy and Hancock would lose. However, when Sebastian is defeated by Perona, he directs his attention to the hovering girl and, to his surprise, discovers that Perona was accompanying Mihawk. Buggy immediately wondered why Mihawk was there, to which both he and Galdino then realized that Mihawk would be an asset to defeating World, but then Buggy quickly worried that Mihawk was there to take credit. In response, Galdino recommended that they leave their trace, and so Buggy ordered the crew to invade the enemy ship. On board, Buggy alerted his crew to stop when he noticed World's presence. They then watched as World fought Luffy, to which Buggy fell into a state of shock after World easily defeated the young pirate. He then realized that his plan was bound to fail if Luffy was defeated, and so he ordered his crew to immediately revive him, which is misinterpreted by the impelled down SKPs as Buggy caring for his friend. Later, while his crew treated Luffy, Buggy continuously slapped him to wake him up. After a while, he succeeded and stated that it all went as planned. Later, while walking through the hallways of the ship, Buggy and his crew encountered Gyrum and was told by him that they had trespassed and that they'd be killed for doing so. Buggy and his crew were then caught between an onslaught of cubes created by Gyrum's Kubu Kubu Nomi. While dodging the attack, Buggy noticed a flattened Luffy that had floated down between the cubes and screamed at him for still being there. Buggy then told Luffy to hurry up and go defeat World, which is misinterpreted by the tightrope walking Funan Bros as words of encouragement, when in reality Buggy was just thinking about how his plan would end in failure if World was not defeated. Upon hearing the cheers from his crew, Buggy then told Luffy that he would handle Gairam, thinking that there'd be no way for him to be defeated with so many impel down escapees under him. To his surprise, however, Gairam then compressed the air around him into a cube and attacked him with his air cube booster. Mr. Three then used his candle wall to block the attack and told them to run. Buggy then ran deeper into the ship and learned that it was a dead end, and before he could do anything, Gairam turned him into a cube using cube break. Gyrim then sent cubed pieces of the floor flying at Buggy, but Buggy simply kept jumping on top of them and mocking Gyrim in the process. However, Gyrim then began knocking off the cubes that Buggy jumped on until Buggy was within hitting range. Before Gyrim could hit him, Buggy used Bara Bara Kinkyu Dashutu to escape and in the process became decompressed. He then summoned back his body parts and became Chibi Buggy when Gyrim held down Buggy's body. When Mr. Three asked him what his next move was, Buggy revealed that he had a secret attack and he was going to use the Muggy Ball to attack and retrieve his torso. After using his special Muggy Ball, the attack created a big cloud of smoke, and while Gyrum was blinded, Hancock jumped and turned Gyrum to stone. The crew, oblivious to the fact that Hancock defeated Gyrum, cheered on Buggy for his victory, which a surprised Buggy happily took credit for. Soon after, the crew found the exit to the ship. Upon exiting, Buggy commented that they could finally escape, but is told by Mr. Three that the rest of the crew could hear what he was thinking, and so he quickly said that he had gone the wrong way and had intended to find the location of World. One of his men then told him that marine ships were approaching, to which Buggy became surprised at their presence. He's then reminded by Mr. Three that he was the one that told for them to be called over there. Buggy then tried to tell the marines that it was him, the new warlord that was on the ship fighting with World, but the marines did not recognize him and ordered by Akainu to fire. Buggy and his crew narrowly escaped the onslaught of cannon fire as he flew through the air with Mr. Three on his back, and his crew swam back to their ship carrying his feet. Afterwards, the newspapers gave credit to Buggy for defeating Burndy World. Zoark. Buggy first appeared after the time skip at Karaibari Island's Buggy District, celebrating Don Quixote Do Flamingo's downfall, which was a great benefit to his business. However, he was then enraged to hear from Moji that Hajrudin and his crew had quit Buggy's delivery. Stories of the self-proclaimed Straw Hat Grand Fleet. After resigning from Buggy's delivery, Hajrudin and his crew sailed away from Buggy's headquarters, leaving Buggy furious at their resignation. He then put all their names on his deserter list. One Piece Stampede. Buggy and his crew were hired by Buena Festa as security for the Pirates Festival. 
However, after Trafalgar Law managed to infiltrate the underground and escape, the entire crew was in a rush to find him for fear of having their pay cut. Unfortunately, just as they found him, Law used his ability to stow away on the passing Thousand Sunny. They attempted to pursue the Straw Hat Pirates in order to capture Law, but were blown away as the Straw Hat Pirates used Kuda Burst to fly up the knockup stream. The crew did ultimately succeed in getting up to the island and were unseen by the other pirates. Buggy used this to his advantage and successfully reached Roger's treasure while everyone else was fighting. He then exposed himself after getting the treasure, causing the other competing pirates to chase after him. However, as he was running away, he decided to take a peek at the treasure, and seeing that it was an eternal pose to Laugh Tail became visibly shocked. A ship was then thrown at the treasure island, destroying it and sending everyone falling back to Delta Island, with Buggy losing the treasure in the process. After Buggy was saved from drowning by his crew, he was shocked to see Douglas Bullet, his former crewmate on the Roger Pirates. As Bullet confronted members of the Worst Generation, Buggy and the other pirates attempted to flee the island. However, they were confronted on the coast by a marine fleet, with the marines and the pacifista landing on the island to battle. As Dracul Mihawk and Boa Hancock appeared, Buggy decided to sneak away. He was later accidentally caught by Smoker, who forced him to reveal what the treasure was. Bullet later tore apart the island with his Gasha Gasha Nomi ability, forming a massive fighting colossus, with Buggy ending up buried in the rubble in the chaos. He was eventually pulled out by Hancock, who was actually looking for Luffy, and soon after the two of them confronted Smoker and Sabo. Smoker, Hancock, and Sabo started working with Law and Luffy to attract Bullet's Colossus, and they succeeded in blowing off one of its arms. Buggy saw that the massive arm was falling onto him, and when he realized that he could not run away in time, he threw a muggy ball at it to destroy it, though it was completely ineffective and was instead destroyed by Rob Lucci's Rankyaku, though Buggy mistakenly believed it was his doing. He was then pulled in by Law to do a concentrated combo attack on the Colossus. Bullet was defeated soon afterward by the Alliance, and Buggy reunited with his crew as they departed from Delta Island. They were confronted by a marine fleet, but were able to pass through it thanks to other pirate ships flanking them, and Sabo creating a wall of fire between them and the fleet. Wano Country Arc after the abolition of the Seven Warlords system, Buggy's delivery was confronted by a marine fleet led by Stainless, making Buggy furious at this turn of events. He ordered his men to prepare to fight, but secretly planned to flee by himself. Egghead Arc While trying to make an escape plan, Buggy's workers told him to fight, prompting them to question if he's afraid of the marines. Buggy was then alerted that all the ships around Karaibare Island were under attack. Buggy then saw it was Crocodile, leading to the workers believing the rumors that Crocodile was Buggy's henchmen. Shocked and panicked at the thought of Crocodile coming to collect the money he still owed him, Buggy viewed his savior as a worse option than the Marines. Following the ship's sinking, Buggy informed Crocodile that his organization was not profitable, and he did not have the money to pay him back, leading to Crocodile suggesting selling Buggy into slavery or to make it up to him as he was starting up a new company that required funds. Buggy then offered to help Crocodile freely without charge. With the formation of the Cross Guild between the two and Dracul Mihawk, Buggy's workers made a poster, promoting the new organization and all three members, emphasizing Buggy. With news reaching Marine Headquarters of the Cross Guild, they viewed the organization as a major threat, as well as viewing Buggy as commanding Mihawk and Crocodile, leading them to adding Buggy to the ranks of the four Emperors after the downfall of Big Mom and Kaido, increasing his bounty to 3,189,000,000. Mihawk convinced Crocodile to spare Buggy's life after the incident so they could use him as a figurehead, and they could always get rid of him if he became a hassle. Buggy was horrified because now he was under the thumb of two powerful and ruthless individuals. The Cross Guild quickly made a name for themselves by putting bounties on Marines and turning the Hunters into the Hunted. After the death of Vice Admiral T-Bone, Buggy awarded the assassin by giving the money to his family and admitted him into the Cross Guild. Buggy was then shocked by the Cross Guild's new ship, which Crocodile and Mihawk were shown to be disgusted by. As a result, Buggy was once again beaten up and dangling on a hook by Crocodile and Mihawk. However, Buggy spoke up against Crocodile's utopia plan, believing it not to be a scheme that a pirate should go for. Crocodile and Mihawk were surprised that Buggy dared speak up against them. Buggy then remembered when both he and Shanks had a conversation after Roger's execution, where Buggy was hoping that Shanks would step into Roger's footsteps and go for the One Piece. But when Shanks replied he did not plan on going for it yet, Buggy declared he'd break up their friendship and consider him an enemy until they meet again. Remembering this conversation and the fact that Shanks decided now of all times to go for the One Piece, Buggy saw this as a provocation by Shanks and decided he wanted to become the Pirate King and get the One Piece as well. However, both Crocodile and Mihawk declared they would never take him to the top, nor did they have any interest in fighting Luffy, Shanks, or Blackbeard. However, Buggy replied that they didn't need to fight them, and just needed to take the treasure before they did, and crossed both Crocodile and Mihawk by using a Den Den Mushi to announce that the Cross Guild would search for the One Piece too. Much to Mihawk and Crocodile's fury and his crew's delight. Abilities and Powers As captain of the Buggy Pirates, Buggy has authority over his crew, which grew exponentially during the Impel Down arc after he freed hundreds of powerful prisoners from Impel Down, whose individual bounties are much higher than his own. 
After hearing that Buggy was once a member of the Roger Pirates, these prisoners came to heavily respect him and follow him wherever he went. The Emperor Edward Newgate even noted that Buggy's new forces could disrupt his crew's ability to save Port Gasdy Ace if they were against him, so he offered an alliance with Buggy during the Summit War of Marineford. Buggy's newfound authority created by his association with the Roger Pirates even attracted the attention of the world government, who offered him a warlord position. Buggy used this position to run a mercenary business called Buggy's Delivery, where he had authority over a large number of powerful mercenaries, including giants from Elbath. However, now that the Seven Warlord system had been dissolved, Buggy returned to being an enemy, meaning he could no longer operate outside of the law as he pleases. Because of his alliance with Dracul Mihawk and Crocodile in the form of Cross Guild, under his supposed leadership, Buggy became recognized as one of the four emperors and earned a bounty of 3,189,000,000. However, despite his high bounty and once being an apprentice of the renowned Roger Pirate, Buggy has never achieved the great strength and combat skills of his crewmates, particularly his former fellow apprentice and Emperor Shanks. In fact, physically speaking and combat-wise, Buggy is relatively weak compared to most of the pirates operating in the New World. It's safe to say that the only reason he survived for as long as he did is because of his lies and manipulations, and several misinterpretations of him and only a few people seeing through the ruse, either thanks to their high intelligence or because they know Buggy well enough. For the most part, he's only truly dangerous against normal citizens and novice pirates in the weakest sea, East Blue, though he did manage to easily defeat the Kumite tribe with the help of Alvida, Moji, and Kabaji. However, Buggy is resilient, having sailed the Grand Line with the Roger Pirates and surviving the battles and perils they were in, including fights against opponents like the Golden Lion Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates. Buggy has also captained his own crew throughout the Grand Line and has survived its perils so far, currently operating in the New World. Buggy was involved in the mass breakout of Impel Down and the Summit War of Marineford and survived, although he was rarely involved in direct combat and most of the fighters paid him little mind. Buggy mainly gets by with his craftiness. He frequently devises plans to unexpectedly overwhelm his opponents with his weapons and devil fruit. He allowed Roranora Zoro to cut him into pieces and pretended to be dead in order to stab him with his detached hand while he was off guard. He was also able to trap Luffy on Goldie Roger's execution platform and would have successfully executed him had lightning not struck the platform. Buggy is also a skilled inventor, as evidenced by his creation of extremely powerful ammunition like Buggy Balls and Muggy Balls, which greatly aid in his destructive capabilities. While alone on an unknown island, he made a trap to attempt to catch a large bird, but the bird was not fooled. Additionally, Buggy is very opportunistic and will frequently look into utilizing other people to help him get into trouble. This was most notably shown in Impel Down, where he freed hundreds of prisoners to get them to follow him and create a riot. When the Marines identified him as a former member of the Roger Pirates, Buggy decided to quickly utilize this to build up his own image. Although his efforts to be seen as great are frequently intentional, Buggy is also benefited from a significant amount of luck when leading the Impel Down escapees, as even though he showed his cowardly nature multiple times, his words and actions were always misconstrued by the escapees as indicators of strength. Physical Abilities Buggy possesses notable physical durability, as he quickly recovered after being hit by a muggy ball that Dracul Mihawk rebounded back toward him in Marineford. Although he avoided most of the damage by using his men as shields, Buggy was able to survive the explosion from a buggy ball that Luffy sent flying back at him, and emerged from the wreckage of the collapsed tavern with no injuries. Additionally, although he does not have immunity to lightning like Luffy, he was able to quickly get back up after being struck on the Logetown execution platform and immediately started chasing after Luffy. In Impel Down, he was able to walk through the extreme heat of level 4 and extreme cold of level 5 without suffering significant adverse effects. Buggy was able to withstand the thrashing of both Crocodile and Dracul Mihawk for his misconceptions. Buggy has a notable amount of physical strength, which is aided by his devil fruit allowing his hands to detach and fly. He was easily able to lift one of his men and Mayor Boodle off the ground by their necks with a single detached hand. Additionally, he was able to lift a massive Blugori high into the air with both of his detached hands, as well as carry Luffy and the very large fishman Jinbei in the air with just his hands holding them against his torso. He was also able to throw Moji a great distance forward. According to Shanks, Buggy was a very good swimmer, but he lost this ability after eating his devil fruit. Devil fruit. Buggy ate the Barabara Nomi, a paramecia type devil fruit that allows him to split his body into pieces and reassemble them at will. This power also makes him immune to slashing attacks, including hockey infused slashes. With the exception of his feet, Buggy can make his disassembled body parts levitate and control them telekinetically. He can launch his body parts at high speed, allowing him to strike a distant target with strong force. He can also split his body to dodge opponent's attacks by detaching the section of his body that would have taken the attack and making it fly out of the way. Furthermore, his body parts remain connected to each other, even when they're separated. For example, if his hand is detached, he can still control his fingers. Additionally, he can feel any pain that is inflicted on his detached pieces. Luck. Rivaling Luffy and Zoro, Buggy has a ridiculous amount of dumb luck, where no matter how terrible the situation becomes for him, he somehow manages to survive, gaining more than he lost. 
lost. He manages to become allies with Alveda, who rescued him from a giant crab and located his missing parts. At Impel Down, Buggy earned followers in the form of dangerous criminals, whose bounties surpass his own, having freed them all because Luffy arrived there at the same time to save Ace. Since then, following a series of events that happened to have all coincided with Buggy's actions, the dangerous pirates continued viewing him as being more powerful than he was, which went alongside his own connections with the Pirate King, Goldie Roger, and the Emperor Shanks to even rescuing Luffy and Jinbei from Sakazuki, because he was in the air lamenting his lost goals. Because of this, he earned his position of a warlord, which sometime after losing this position, he became an emperor because of his supposed command over Dracul Mihawk and Crocodile, who happened to have saved him as the Marines came to arrest him, all because one of his men made it appear so in a poster sent out. While both Mihawk and Crocodile were initially wrathful at Buggy for his unintentional usurpation of the Cross Guild's presidency, the two predominant pirates eventually agreed to spare Buggy's life as they chose him to be the Cross Guild's figurehead, so that the weak pirate could have all the excessive global attention. Blades. Buggy's most frequently used weapons are his knives. In addition to simply holding them, he also has his knives between his fingers to wield them like claws. He often uses his knives in conjunction with his devil fruit power by flying his detached hands and trying to strike people from afar. He can also throw the knives with power and accuracy. Additionally, he possesses retractable knife blades in his shoes and can detach his legs and spin them to strike opponents. Thus, Buggy is capable of overwhelming opponents by flying his detached blade holding limbs at rapid speed and attacking from multiple directions at once. He wielded a sword when attempting to behead Luffy in Logetown. Buggy Balls and Muggy Balls Buggy's most prominent weapons are his Buggy Balls, which are immensely powerful cannonballs that can instantly demolish an entire row of buildings. With this assumption, he can terrorize a village that is not well protected, such as Orange Town, and easily destroy it whenever he wants. Additionally, he has also fired Buggy Balls at people who came close to his base to confront him or subordinates that displease him, bringing certain death upon them. However, his crewmates have been shown to survive after being hit. While in Impel Down, Buggy revealed a smaller version of the Buggy Ball known as a Muggy Ball. Despite being only slightly bigger than a bullet, the Muggy Ball possesses equivalent destructive power to a Buggy Ball, and since it's so small, Buggy can carry them on his body and throw them rather than having to shoot them out of a cannon like Buggy Balls. Buggy was able to severely injure the awakened Zoan user Minotaurus by hitting him with a Muggy Ball. The Muggy Balls do not make Buggy Balls entirely redundant, however, as they aren't able to be fired out of a cannon. So they can only be launched a fraction of the speed that Buggy Balls can and are much slower. And that, my friends, is the life of Buggy. Did you enjoy this video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.